And this is a before look of the frets. See there's some pretty shoddy work in the crowning. It doesn't really, I don't know if these are new frets or what, but the uh, you can see there's some quite a bit of a nasty marring on that kind of stuff. So you can actually fix that up pretty easy. Um, some sandpaper and whatever, if you care to. But the fretboard definitely needs to be conditioned. It is um, probably been cleaned a few times, but not really um, you know, oiled and uh, maintained. So I can get that looking absolutely gorgeous again. And the body work is actually pretty good. It's not too many scars in the uh, it's pretty much just standard swirls. Take that down to probably a uh, you know 600 grit, and then polish it out all the way up to 3,000, and to buff it, and you can get that to look like a mirror again. Uh, body of the guitar doesn't have too many dings on it. It's in pretty good shape. So, anyways, I got to check the electronics as well, but that's what the neck looks like. Okay, the land of the super controversy. Okay, what to do to polish the frets and oil with what and all of linseed versus lemon oil versus blue. Okay, look, I've been doing this for years. Uh, I started off with the high end stuff with some lin linseed oil, ran out of it, and then just got myself one of these and I've had one for about 10 million years now and it's never gonna run out. Uh, so you can use whatever you want. I've done a video before using everything in my power. I used linseed oil, I use guitar st center stuff, and, and just to give you an idea, the reason I did the, vo the, the video is because this little thing was five bucks. This right here was like a dollar sixty at you know, like Walmart or something like that, and the results were exactly the same. So I'm gonna start off uh, on this with double aught steel wool, and the reason I'm doing that is because if you look at the frets themselves, they are really nasty. I mean, you can see somebody when they did the fret work on this, I don't know who did, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but this is really not nice. Uh, this is just, just left it very, very rough. Um, so you can, you can use the double lot. Really what you need to do is tape the whole thing off. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now. I just don't have the patience for it, even though I'm, <laughs> the patience for all the other steps. Uh, fret work is just really, really time consuming and I wanna get this thing back up and running. Uh, but what I'm gonna do for this situation is I'm gonna use double lot steel wool to try to remove just a, some of the finer scratches on the top. And we'll start down here and we'll just work across and get a nice piece that's open. And I put most of the pressure on the fret itself. I'm not trying to hit the fret board so much, but just kinda round off the top of the fret, the finger. Just try to give it a little bit of a, get rid of any burrs or anything that I can. And just work it out. And again, this is double lot steel wool. And it looks like it's uh, done a pretty good job of getting rid of some of the bigger, bulkier, you know, scratches. If I just work the top of it, I know it seems strange, but it's not going to affect the wood as much as you think it is. Um, even though you think steel is stronger, uh, this nickel is actually very, very gentle metal. It wears down uh, quite easy. It's pretty easy to repair. So if you had some, um, uh, you know, some of those fret erasers or whatever you want to do, you could sit there and go up many, many different levels. But this is just double lot steel wool, and everybody thinks this is the devil. But also keep in mind that this neck is removed from the body, so you don't have to worry about taping anything off. No pickups or anything that are involved. Um, so that. If you you know you have the theory that you don't want to use steel wool, now you can see all this crap that's right here, um, you know, the residual that's left over. Yeah, this stuff is fine powder, and it can get into your pickup cavities, and yeah, it can be a mess. But if you take the neck off, of course, if it's a neck through, you can't. But if you just tape it off, and again, I always say, use a magnet first, get the big stuff, and use a can of air to finish it off. But let's take a look at this fret, just with the double lot, going over the edges on the sides, inside the crevice here, where the stuff gets nasty. All right, now this is the result of just the double lot. 
looks way better especially you know compared to all the other frets but you know the edge is much softer doesn't have uh, those really nasty burrs like it had before so you can kind of work that over and over try to see if you can round it and just using your fingertip It does a pretty good job. All right, now we'll grab the, where's the other steel wool? This is the fine stuff, so I think I just put it away. But, eh, whatever. You don't want to confuse this stuff. Make sure you put it back in the bag if you're not using it. All right, so I'll just use this. This is the 4 out steel wool, and I'll hit it again. I'm just doing one fret at a time just to show you the difference. to all the other frets. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much uh, self-explanatory. So you can absolutely polish the frets and get a fantastic result. Uh, now you can obviously see very clearly all those little pitting, all that stuff. So you would really have to kind of get down on this thing and really get, um, you know, probably 400 to 800, you know, a thousand go all these crazy numbers and stuff like that. And yeah, you can get this to, you know, shine like a mirror. But I'm going to try and mask it off, and I'm going to buff it. Probably not with this, just because I'm a little bit afraid of, of this, you know, hitting too much of the guitar. Uh, so typically what I'll do is I'll use my Dremel. Um, I've got this guy on here. And I can use more of a fine fine application for it but I would just say this um, don't do this um, if you don't have to this is this is kind of me just overkilling it this is plenty fine and you really don't have to do all this extra work to get this done so I'm just gonna plug it in here And get a little bit of the uh, fine compound. I'm just going to work it. Again, this is what you want to avoid. You can still get that off, but what I would do if I was going to do the whole thing is to, sorry, I can't see it, but if you're gonna do the entire thing, you can um, tape it off. And there's a great tape saving uh, technique is what you do is you really tape both sides of the fret and you keep moving the tape instead of having to tape the entire thing. Um, it's actually a pretty useful technique. But then when you get to the edge, really we're trying to buff it. Now I'm gonna go across it. Cross like this and do a high speed. Let's see what that did. Let's clean that off. Back here. Let's see if it made any difference with all those things. Let's buff all that crap off. All right. So yeah, that's a pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty damn good result. I mean, that's like a mirror. So, 
Uh, just so you know, you can do a couple of things to get your uh, frets looking absolutely amazing without going through a billion different little steps. Um, and it actually did do a nice job on this. But again, to be safe, you should tape off that area. That way you can kind of get into that area, uh, you know, with this with the Dremel and, and really clean it up. But when you look at how busted these other frets are, you know, compared to how beautiful that is, and that's not even completely clean either. Yeah, it's even better. So, yeah, you can get these things looking like mirrors if you want. It's just depending on how much work you put into it. But, yeah, a little bit of fine compound. Um, you know, there you go. That's how you fret it. And then after that, I'm going to buff. Uh, I use a 4 aught steel wool. Um, whoops, sorry. I use 4 aught steel wool for polishing the fretboard or just, you know, buffing the fretboard and clean that off. And then I, I hit this, the rag, to clean off the dust first. And then I use another uh, one of these rough rags to just buff in everything like that. And I'll just, I'll get to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up all the frets first, polish them all. And then uh, I'm going to move on to cleaning the actual fretboard. So we'll show you then. Yeah, so this is the technique from now on. This is all double lot steel wool for the most part. You see how there's plenty of those little gashes in the frets. All over. So they're all cleaned and shiny. This is the last one, so you can see the difference. This is what we started with, okay? Now this one I just buffed, and it looks like a mirror. Well, it only took me a couple of seconds, but in comparison to the other ones, you can see how damaged the other ones look versus that one right there at the 11th fret. Didn't take very much work. Definitely wear eye protection for this. This is all I did. Big difference. Now I spun this over to get the other side of it. And get it kind of a more of an angle on it. Residual junk. And that. Again, these are polished with double lot steel wool. And then these, you can see the shine difference. Freaking mirrors. So, not tough. That. And if you ever get any of the grime that hits there from the wheel, just use a steel wool and it'll come off the thing and then when we oil it, it's gonna look amazing, so. Neato. So there you have it. Polished, buffed, clean fretboard, whole shebang. This is before. This is after. Now, I'll go ahead and put on lemon oil. On a clean spot. Again, I'm gonna use some old English. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Cheap it cheap, cheap, cheap it to cheap. Put that right on there, right there. You don't need that much, but I use that much. And I just work it in. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I make that sound when I am doing this. 
Let it sit there for a second. Get all pretty. You can use this to kind of clean as much as you can out of the gook. Oh, that's nasty. Let's turn it to another part of the rug. Wipe it off. And that's what every single one of my guitars looks like every single time I change strings. I don't do all the buffing and everything like that with the uh, high speed Dremel, um, but I do this. Um, uh, I do use the 4 aught steel wool against the frets and the fretboard every single time when I change strings just to get any kind of skin or whatever off. So that's what it looks like years and years and years. And look at that. I don't know about you. That's how I take care of my instruments. There you have it. They look absolutely stunning compared to where they started off with. So you can see a lot of that damage was gone. Still there a little bit, but not enough to make a huge difference like on the impact of that. But uh, just as a tip, um, when you do polish this, uh, you will leave a little bit of residue back on there. So if you go back and just use your finger to polish the frets. You can get some of that residual junk because you don't want that stuff coming back up on your hand and get back on the strings. Um, and then you can just clean it off pretty easy, but uh, that came out great. So I'm super happy to put this whole thing back together. Look at that. That's looking beautiful. Stoke. So I like to put together the uh, the neck once it's uh, all finished with the the you know, the frets and everything else is clean. Uh, I like to put them together uh, a little bit separate so I can put together the whole headstock, the nut, and all these different little pieces um, before I actually attach it to the body because when I put the body back together, I like to put together the electronics and it's just easier to work on. And if you have this thing sitting on the desk, it just, it becomes too big and, and, and kind of clunky. So we'll go ahead and put everything together, um, you know, starting with the, the tuners and, you know, the nut and all that other little pieces. And then I'll show it to you when it's finished.